Hi there, this is uh, Dave Jones from VideoEffectsUniverse.com and today's tutorial is in 3D Studio Max and I'm going to show you how to create a chrome material effect. Now a chrome material uh, looks very very good when it's done properly and it can be used in many many different things. Okay, so um, yeah, what I'm going to do first is go into our standard primitives and create a plane. Let's drag that in. Okay. I'm going to give it quite a few uh, width and length segments. I'll say about 35 and 35. Okay. Right. Now what I'm going to do is click on the modify and I'm going to apply a bend. Okay. I'm going to select the X axis. I'm going to limit the effect. I'm going to bring this right up and I'm going to bring this right down. Okay not looking quite good at yet at the moment yet so I'll just need to bring this up a bit more so that it bends it out. You probably need to do this quite a bit okay until the whole thing turns into a nice smooth ramp. You can use your front viewport to um, tell how it's going so that's looking quite good indeed. Right now I want to uh, turn this around so that it's facing the front. There we go. If I just zoom out a bit more um, what I'm going to do is size this up a bit more so there we go and also here to make it higher as well press M for the material apply the grey to it one of these grey spheres uh, that gives it a material now what we're going to do is uh, create an object that we're going to use to turn into a chrome object okay so for this instance I'm going to go to extended primitives Torus knot. And I'm going to click and hold and drag it in, release, and I'm going to bring it out a bit more. Okay, and release again. Now what I need to do is uh, bring this over to here, bring it up a bit. Now it's quite large, so what I'm going to do is scale it down because it's uh, quite big at the moment. So let's just scale this right down. Okay. Right, that's looking good. Now what I want to do is align it up so that it sits perfectly on the plane. Not actually on the bend bending part, but on the flat part here. So I'm gonna try and get in as close as I can to make sure that it's on the f on the floor there and that looks quite good. Okay, and in my perspective I'm just gonna turn this around so we can get a nice view of the uh Taurus knot. Right, let's place it in the middle there. Right, now what I'm going to do is going to create some text, okay? So I'm going to click on um, my spleens here and click text. I'm going to drag it into the top viewport and I'm going to type in Chrome. Okay, I'm going to scale that right down. Okay, so it's nice and small. Okay, I'm going to uh, also bring it up so it's facing upwards. Okay, that's looking uh, like it's standing up pretty well. There we go, that's standing up. Uh, now what we're going to do to the um, to the text is go to a modify, modify list, and bevel. Okay. Uh, I'm going to size that up a bit more so it's a bit thicker and with the level 1 I'm going to bring it out and level 2 we need to select that uh, let's have a look there we go that's looking quite good so it's got a bit more of a, more of a shape to it now uh, we'll click on uh, keep lines from crossing now, this is quite useful because uh, when you actually um, apply textures and stuff like that it can cause problems I'm going to bring it out the front here there we go, I'm going to line that up properly now with this I need to bring the camera down uh, so what I want to do is uh, bring the camera so that it's facing more to the front rather than an angle right now comes to adding our uh, material this is quite simple to do. Right, what you need to do is press M, go to your next 
empty sphere here. Open up the maps, click on the reflection, and what we want to do is click on ray trace. Right. Now, this is how you add your material. Alright, first off, what we want to do is uh, click on this uh, None button here. Choose Bitmap. And what you want to do is find an image. It can be uh, anything you want because this image is actually the reflection that you're creating. Okay, so I'm going to go to my documents, uh, my pictures, and uh, basically I have a couple of uh, sample photographs here. Uh, I have a rock and I also have a nice chrome effect here but I'm going to use this here, this this landscape here open and as you can see this turns into a chrome um, effect onto the sphere here so I'm going to go up up to the very top here also what I'm going to do is click on a diffuse colour and actually bring this down as really dark because um, it brings out the chrome a hell of a lot more when it's a darker colour as you can see right now what I'm going to do is select my torus and then I'm going to apply this to the torus okay and I'll bring it also so it's visible in the viewport and for this one I'm going to change the uh, chrome again to a different type so I'm going to click on maps uh, reflection uh, where is it ray trace and click on this uh, bitmap and in this one I'm going to use this one here open okay back up back up and change the diffuse color so it's a really really dark it doesn't need to be black but it needs to be quite near the top there and I'm going to apply this to the chrome okay if I just do a quick preview I will show you what you come back with and there you have it. So uh, that's, that's that's quite good indeed. Now you can do this with anything. So if I just uh, create a uh, create a sphere, drag that in, give it loads and loads of segments, maps, and apply this one to it. We'll also have the ball or the sphere, sorry, which is uh, applied. So you can actually create your own ball bearings. Make sure it's aligned up properly. Let's change the camera. Let's bring it back a bit. Now, we might want to light the scene. So, uh, if you want to light the scene quite well, there are many ways you can do this. You can add a spotlight. Um, however, I'm going to choose standard lights. I'm going to try to choose a skylight, which, which gives uh, the whole scene light globally. And I'm going to line this up here so that it's like that. I'm going to bring it over here. I'm also going to bring it down. Right, go over to our modify panel here. Uh, make sure that cast shadows is selected. Bring the samples down to around about five. And if you do a render, uh, render. Let's see what we come back with. This is what you come back with. You can see now that it has a very, very soft, realistic shadow to it, and this actually looks like a photorealistic chrome object. Now, like I say, you can have all kinds of different effects uh, that you come back with um, if you use different kinds of images. Um, like I say, any image you want will create a very, very interesting chrome effect. And if you bring up your materials and that, uh, in your chrome effect here, you can change your glossiness, you can bring it 70 and for the specular level and also the glossiness as well and this creates a uh, quite big impact to it as well it create, gives it even more of a chrome effect so there's no sort of set preset what you can have for this I mean you can mess around with any of these and they will both have different effects and it looks like it's on a real surface and it's a real object so you can play around with this as much as you want use any images you want to use as your reflection uh, in your rave trace settings in your materials editor here so this is uh, Dave from uh, videoeffectsuniverse.com uh, please uh, log on to the site, download this tutorial um, join the forum and um, I shall speak to you soon bye